Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Whiteville, North Carolina, visiting Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, and I'm checking out a 2020 Jeep Gladiator in the Rubicon trim level. Now this one has a significant amount of upgrades, and I'll go over the window sticker later on in the video so you can see what individual upgrade was on this vehicle and the price. This Gladiator is sitting on 285 70 Falcon tires wrapped around 17 inch alloy wheels. Now these are a stronger alloy wheel than the Wrangler. It also has four wheel ventilated disc brakes on all four wheels. The name of this color is Firecracker Red. And the sun is shining now, so hopefully you get an idea of what the color looks like. And while we're looking at the hood, we can see the, the fence here and the little bumpers these are the bumpers for the windshields. When you fold down the windshield, right there they land on that and then you can tie it down with a strap. Has the Rubicon name there on the side of the hood. The trail rated badging here on this side. Has a little side vent there. So looking at the front, this one has the LEDs, headlights, and I have a video of the Wrangler at night, which has the same LED headlight system as the Gladiator. So you can check that out on my channel if you'd like. So it has a LED halo around the outside of the round headlight, and then a projector tube there in the center portion. It's kind of a combination of, uh, of the projector and reflector around the outside. Then you have the LEDs there on the side, on the fender flares. And you notice the fender flares are body colored. It has a metal bumper. And this portion on the outside is removable. So you can see these bolts here. You take this out, that increases your approach angle in the front. While still giving you really good coverage as far as a metal bumper. You can also put a winch in here. So this is winch capable. Fog lights are LEDs and a reflector housing. Then you can see the red tow hook sticking up here in the front and you have some in the back. I'll show you that in a second. Check out this profile. It's got a pretty good length. Even though it has a five foot bed, uh, the front is look at like a half truck, half Wrangler looking thing and it's not overly like, ridiculously long. I think it would be ridiculously long if they were to have a longer bed. So some people want this maybe a six or eight foot bed. It would just look, I don't know, <laughs> a little bit too long. But anyways, it's already long enough, I think. So you can see it has these rock rails across the bottom. This is a protective piece, a really heavy steel beam that's protected the side of the vehicle from debris and rocks and stuff. It also has that on the back of the bed. So this is that sticks out a little bit. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that on a factory vehicle. This is what the key looks like and it shares the same key with the Wrangler. Has a pretty good size to it. Uh, it's not as heavy as you would think considering how big it is. I mean, it's really big. Uh, it does have the remote start, lock and unlock and a panic button and a little flip out key. Now the key is just for lockable compartments or in case you need to unlock the vehicle uh, with the battery is dead or something. But generally you can just keep this in your pocket and use the vehicle 100%. You can unlock the doors, you can start it up, everything uh, without taking the key out of your pocket or a bag. It's a proximity system. Also, if you walk up to the vehicle to lock, and to lock the doors, you push this button. To unlock it, you put your hand behind the handle. There's a sensor back here. It senses the key within a close proximity within a few feet of the outside of the door, and it unlocks the door and allows you access to the vehicle. You also, on the driver and passenger, have a physical key location here on the door. So opening up the door, uh, it shares the same doors as the Wrangler. And what I like about the new Wranglers and this Gladiator is that the door is actually stops, okay? So it doesn't just flop around. It stops there and it stops there. The older Wranglers would just, you open the door, once it's released, it flops around, the wind can blow it around. Uh, now it has that, you know, that catch system. The inside of the door, you do have some soft touch here at the top, here 
And here on your armrest, some red stitching looking nice. There's your handle. Uh, it's, you can kind of serve as a little pocket as well because it is enclosed. And then you have a net pocket here at the bottom. Pretty good size. It goes all the way across. Keeps everything secure from rattling so much. It also has this portion under here uh, as a lift handle. So you can, when you lift the door off the hinges, you will have to lift it straight up once you take the bolts out. And also once you to carry it, it kind of gives you a good center of gravity uh, grip on it. So you can hold with one hand the top of the door and uh, under here and at kind of a natural position and you can carry the door wherever, wherever you need to carry. So this one has the leather seats with the red stitching. And they are heated as well. Has the Rubicon name embroidered in the back of the seat. Really impressive looking seats. Now as with the Wrangler, uh, these are manually adjusted seats. So for water fording and things like that, uh, it doesn't have any electronics under the seat. There's your leg room. The floor mats snap in place. This one has the regular old carpet mats. Of course, you can get the upgraded mats if you like. The carpet itself snaps in place as well. So you can see one of the snaps there in case you need to take the carpet out. If you're doing water fording or whatever, uh, that's a good idea. There's another snap under here. Uh, so you can remove the carpet uh, if you're leaving the top off or if you're doing a, you know, some extreme off-roading, you can you know, start taking it out and allowing the water to flow in and out of the vehicle. So there's the handle that you typically see in the Wranglers right there. Nice big uh, exposed Allen wrench bolts looking pretty nice and look heavy duty. And then you have this matte red right there looking nice. All four doors have a handle to help you get in and out of the vehicle. This will help if you were to put the 35 inch tires, the larger wheels and tires on this vehicle. Uh, which you can put up to 35s on it, including the spare tire location holds a 35 inch tire. Lockable glove compartment is kind of small, but it does have several locking compartments. So there's one. Uh, the other is here. And then under the back seats and behind the back seats. We'll get to that very shortly. This one has the Freedom Hardtop in the black color. You can have body colored uh, painted if you like, but you see the little separation right in here. These front two panels can be removed independently. Uh, so you can take those out so that make it easier to take them out and they latch in place. So you just turn some latches and pull it right out, both of them. So that way, this is an easy uh, way to get some sun above your head. Now this back portion, you do have to use some tools to take it off and maybe a little bit of help, uh, but it does come with the tools and it does have a real glass back portion, unlike the soft top and a heated back glass and a little sliding window as well. So this portion is separate from the front. So that way you can just easily take these off. If you really wanna take it off, then you can go ahead and continue to take that off as well. Privacy glass here in the back glass and of course you can tint the front glass to match it if you like. And you can see it keeps the uh, visit, you know, people looking in there, but looking out, it reduces glare and actually helps out with your visibility out of the vehicle. Okay, so the inside of the rear door is significantly smaller and it does share, like I mentioned, uh, the same style as the uh, same door as the Wrangler. So back here, soft touch, soft touch, just like uh, the front. And then this is enclosed here, so you can use that. And then there's your lift handle and your net pocket. So you can see the doorway slants right in here. Um, that too, so that way they can match the, uh, the four-door Wrangler Unlimited doors. Um, and also that probably helps a little bit out with the you know, side safety as well. So there's the back of the front seats and the back of the front seats have this hard plastic and the net pocket and bag holders. It also has these Molly webbing right here. So if you have any Molly webbing um, and attachments, whatever, you can attach it to there or you could just use it as a, a tie down spot. 
and it looks really cool. <laughs> Snap in floor mats back here, some cup holders with little corners wedged out so you can put mugs or whatever. You also have a uh, 400 watt, 115 volt power supply back here. 400 watts pretty significant for these power inverters. You also have a USB uh, charge port. There's right back here, so let me show you. There's USB regular and USB C charge ports. And then right above that is your window controls. These are for your windows, your power windows. The front power windows are in the center console. I'll show you that very shortly. Then you have vents back here. That's nice for the rear passengers. So the back seats are specifically designed for the Gladiator and they have the latch system for car seats that are exposed. Easy to find, really easy to put in a car seat. If you ever had to put one in, you'll realize how much better this is. That's a really good selling feature to people who put car seats in, I would think. Okay, so this folds down. You have armrest and cup holders. Uh, but this is a 60-40 split uh, lift up and fold down. So there's the split right there on the other side. And basically, this lifts up. And you have some lockable storage under here. There's your tools for your spare tire, which is located underneath the vehicle. And you saw that in the very few seconds of the vehicle, I suppose. This lifts up. And you have the lockable, see the little key location here. So use the physical key to open this up. And lock or lock it and it's all open from this side all the way to the other side you can put a rifle back here fishing poles anything long or tools or whatever you want and then you also have little places for dividers to go into and they're in that bag right there and also you notice that handle uh, this is a compartment that is removable so you can unbolt it there's little covers there you unbolt it which it comes with the tools to do so and you can take this out and carry it with you and it's lockable Now another lockable uh, compartment is behind the seats, but before we do that, let me show you, you can lower these headrests uh, so you can get a little bit better visibility, or you can lift this little latch right here to fold the seats down, but there's a keyhole right there. If you can see that, you just put the physical key in there, turn it, it's very easy, and you can lock this portion on both sides. But since it's unlocked, we'll go ahead and fold it down so you can see what's back here. You can see the subwoofer back here and the little storage space. A little bit more storage space on the other side, uh, but I think it's pretty cool to have a lockable, more lockable uh, places because since you're able to take the top off, the doors off, all that kind of stuff, and especially a soft top, it's nice to have lockable compartments. Taking a look at the back of the truck, it has the red tow hooks sticking out here. Looking pretty cool. Very functional having tow hooks in the front and the back, especially considering you can add a winch to the front as well. So the backup camera is in the very center position right here. And you have a lockable tailgate physically locking it also locks with the key when you turn the lock and unlock the vehicle it locks the tailgate you can disable that if you'd like uh, but that's the way it is then you have a third brake light right here integrated in the top of the tailgate led tail lights here in the back all the exterior lights on this vehicle is led has parking sensors across the back so you can see those little parking sensors there you have a four and seven way outlet above the bumper here. So that way it keeps the debris from getting on it so much. And of course it does also have a cover. And then there's your tow hitch. And it's like 7,600 pound towing. I'll, I'll put all the specs and everything in the description, but it is really significant amount of towing. Lowering the tailgate, let's go ahead and do that. It's a physical, mechanical, I mean, latch like so, and it's assisted soft dampened lowering and it's pretty neat because uh you can have different positions on this tailgate so you can see it has this cable and that little thing right there so let's go ahead and lift it up put this through there like so drop it back now we have 
Now we'll do that on both sides to do it properly. Now we have a little bit of an incline there. So if we're putting something a little bit too long for the bed or something like that, uh, we can have that just to kind of hold it in place or whatever, uh, not just completely flat down. I think that's pretty cool. It's a very simple, easy to add type deal, and it kind of adds some additional functionality. So there's another 400 watt power inverter back here, and you can turn that on up there in the in the uh, in the cab. Uh, but that helps out with charging tools, things like that. So you have these cleat systems across the edge. That way you have a tie down anywhere along that line, and then you have uh, fixed tie down locations on all four corners at the lower portion, and the LED cargo cargo light bed lights here. Now I just want to mention the uh, the power inverter is not intended for like high watts. Okay, so 400 watts may seem like a lot, but uh, when you're actually looking at wattage, uh, 400 is not very much uh, for like you know a lot of power tools and stuff like that are much higher than that. So you just want to make, be sure that your your device, whatever you plug in there, it's not going to power a higher hair dryer or a toaster or anything like that. Um, but it is pretty cool to have an outlet right back here. Fuel door is here on the driver's side, and it's not locking, which is a little surprising. It has a traditional cap, tether, and when you take the cap off, it has this little place here to put the tether in, so that way it hangs there and doesn't scratch your paint. Here on the other side of the back seats, we'll go ahead and lift that up, and you can see the storage compartment here. This is basically the same part, it's just the other side. And you can see the keyhole for locking. And then you have a place to put the bolts and things for taking off the door. So it has a diagram here showing you where to put the bolts and a little place to put them. So when you take the doors off, fold down everything, take the top off, all that stuff, uh, you have a count and what to bolt, kind of a shadow of what the bolt's supposed to look like and where you put it in there to keep it organized and that way you don't lose them. Uh, while you're out somewhere and you try to put the top back on, you can't find the bolts, so that would be uh, not good. So behind this, this is also locking. Remember, it has a keyhole here. We just lift this up. And there's some more storage compartment space back here. So the Gladiator has quite a few, like other Jeep brand vehicles, uh, Easter eggs. So here's one that's kind of neat. It says 419 and it has a little heart there. So I think I'll let you figure that one out. I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with uh, somewhere is for lovers and an area code. So you can look up an area code and maybe figure that out. It also has these little sandals on the front and also a little Jeep climbing the side of the window. Let's go ahead and start it up. I got the key in my pocket. It'd be, it could be in a bag, it could be in a cup holder, it doesn't matter. Put my foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button. Did you catch that little Jeep Wrangler across the bottom of the screen? Let's go ahead and start it up again so you can see it. Isn't that cool? It kind of drives there across the bottom when you start it up. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. As you can see, the accelerator, brake pedal, and then of course, if you had the manual transmission, you'd have a clutch over here. So it doesn't give you a tremendous amount of room once you start filling with it full of pedals. So there's no footrest or anything like that. To open the hood, there is a latch on both sides. So just pull that down. It's just like the Wrangler. You pull it down to a certain point and then it kind of pops out of its spot. And there's a little rubber portion inside here. This is metal and it kind of holds it down. So it release some pressure. So now when we do this one, like so, we push it all the way down. It still has a little bit of pressure on that. So what we have to do is, it's very easy, you just push down a little bit and then slide that back and it releases it. Then there's another safety catch here in the very center. So we can lift it up. You can kind of feel in there, right there in the center. And you move it to the right, see it right here? That's your safety latch. You can actually add a lockable uh, safety latch here 
if you'd like to. It's an it's a extra part that Jeep sells. Now, you do have to hold the hood up and it does require a prop, which is right here, and it swings down and you guessed it goes right there where it says prop. The Gladiator shares the same powertrain basically as the Jeep Wrangler. So 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, 285 horsepower paired to an eight speed automatic transmission in this particular case. Of course, you can get the six speed manual if you like, but it's, a, it's an engine that the Chrysler Group basically uses in a lot of things and it's been, it's been doing well. Now it has an insulated battery over here, insulated firewall. There's also some heat shielding in the back here. And there, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and I'll get to that in just a minute, why that heat shielding is there and why it's not 100% uh, like effective. Look how easy it is to get to the oil filter right there. Right there in front center, easy to find if you know what to look for. It doesn't look like an oil filter uh, to the old school guys like me but that's what it is. Okay, so back to the heat shielding. So basically, the exhaust flows from both sides of the V6 engine, uh, from the far side and this side, and then comes around and meets right underneath the floorboard of the driver's seat. So when I looked at it with a thermal imaging, I noticed there was a lot of heat there in the floorboard of the driver's seat. Uh, right there in the floorboard and then when I looked underneath that's where this a lot of a lot of the exhaust all the exhaust flows right there And I know they have to put it somewhere So if you're going off-roading you're crawling through off-road conditions You're really pushing the vehicle and you're not going very fast Then there's gonna be a lot of heat buildup right there underneath the driver's seat So if you're driving alone all the heats can be right there now if they were to put it on the other side somehow I don't know if they could have uh, then it might have you know helped out a little bit but anyways something to mention if you're in a cold environment that might actually be a plus because that way you get the benefit of that extra heat there in the floorboard keeping you warm uh, but anyways that's something kind of interesting that i wanted to mention uh, that kind of didn't think about until i looked at it with the thermal imaging we'll start here on the passenger side so it has the handle here pretty good height off the ground let's go ahead and lift my leg up in there like so scoot in it's a little bit higher butt height is a little bit higher uh, than mine so that way i can lift a little bit up in there but it's really easy to get in and out of as far as the height that's nice okay so let's go ahead and put the seat all the way back i would like that um articulation goes pretty far Okay, so yeah, it's got some crampness to my feet. There's just a small amount of leg room here. Uh, very large center portion for the transmission. Um, but the knee room is better, is good. And now I can kind of do that number, which is nice. You can hold on. I got a handle here, here. I also make handles that go right here for what I understand. Just like the Wrangler. So with the seat all the way back, let's see how I fit in the back. This door is a little bit tighter, but let's see, it might not make it that much of a difference. Just gotta watch out for this thing. Just hook me in the back or something. Okay, so the seat all the way back now Go ahead and use that handle, kind of slide in. I do have to watch my head now, ducking down, getting in. That's not so bad, really. Uh, it's dished out a little bit, and with the seat all the way back, this is pretty darn good. I'm surprised that I'm able to sit back here with the seat all the way back uh, because I was worried about this hard plastic, but it's not really an issue because I'm, my knees aren't hitting it. And I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea. And the headroom is way, way up there. Got lots of headroom. Now this portion is low, but up here, it's much higher. Yeah, this is nice, actually. Um, I can't recline kind of more in of a uh, vertical position. These seats are kind of straight up. Not completely straight up, but they're... They're okay. They're not not so bad. 
Uh, some cup holders there. Very small hump in the center, but the cup holders make it higher. So let's go ahead and scoot over on this side. Actually, let's go to the center. Center is a little, well, I have to straddle this. Um, I have to put my knees in this little dished out port. But I can do it. Now the people on the side would have to be tiny. Over here to the other side. Man, the air conditioner feels good. They got a really good air conditioning. Even back here. Makes a big difference on the hot, hot days, hot places. Got speaker grills up here. All right, so getting out. You gotta watch out for this thing. Do have a handle. And just kind of like flop down. Good, right on down like so. So that makes it easier to just get, just fall out of it. If I had to get up out of it, it might be a little bit of a, an issue, but uh, just because of the space here, but just falling out, that's, that's good. Especially the headroom, tons of headroom. So you don't have to worry about that. Driver's seat one-ups the passenger, of course. It's, it's a manual seat, but it does have a height adjustment and lumbar adjustment here. Knob is rubberized, rubberized here, as well as a lot of, of the controls here. So you have your headlight switch here. It's also a rubberized dial. Uh, so you have automatic on, parking and off. This is for your fog lights, and this is for your rear cargo lights. You have a dimmer switch for your interior gauges and your ambient lighting. And this is where you turn on that cargo uh, outlet so that 115 volt power supply back there you can turn that on here it has a little indicator light when it is turned on you also have a tilt and a telescoping steering column you lock in place right there so getting in to the driver's seat just like the other side basically like so and wow this is nice I got the seat all the way back all the way down just to give you an idea of you know my six foot tall self room uh it's not super roomy um there's no footrest over here like i mentioned before that's kind of a negative for me um, but i guess you, you'd have to have on the manual transmission you'd have to have a pedal there but on on the automatic i think it would be nice to have a little footrest there but it doesn't have it foot's kind of just dangling around anyway i can put my leg right there just a lot better okay so it is a leather wrapped red stitched three spoke steering wheel and man does it look nice and feel good it's good thickness and it has a little bit of give to it it's not too hard or anything cruise controls here on the right side and has the adaptive cruise controls so you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using the radar adaptive cruise control on the back of the steering wheel is your volume knob so you use your fingers here when you're driving i love that feature so you can change to the volume there's a center button that changes through your audio source on the left side it has an up and down to change through your uh, tracks or radio stations things like that and then there's a center button here that changes through your presets on your radio only here on the left side you can see these arrows in the okay that corresponds with the screen here between the gauges then you have your bluetooth controls um, hang up and answer make calls and your voice recognition as well it has a very advanced voice recognition system that you can learn how to use because once you learn how to use it there's a little little book that comes with the vehicle should teaches you the commands there's a tremendous amount of stuff a lot more than other vehicles that i've seen uh the jeep and the chrysler brand in general has a really advanced voice recognition system windshield wiper controls are here turn signal and headlight dimmer switch on the left side okay so looking at these gauges if you have your rpms here on the left and your speedometer there on the right both of these are actual physical gauges but there in the center portion is a screen so you has you have the speedometer outside temperature the direction the vehicle's facing what gear you're in odometer and all that stuff and your engine coolant temperature as well uh, but using these buttons we can scroll up and down okay so right now it's showing the speedometer scrolling down can see it's actually part of a menu system number two vehicle info now that we're here we can scroll left and right and get uh, temperatures and pressures of the engine 
even the tire pressure. Scrolling down again, takes us to our off-road pages, the drivetrain uh, sway bar connected. It, when you disconnect it, it'll let you know that it is disconnected. Scrolling to the right will give you a pitch and roll. These are off-road uh, features. Scrolling down, adaptive cruise control, letting you know what's going on with that. If we go ahead and turn the cruise control on, it gives you the uh, visual reference here so we can set the distance between us and the vehicle in front of us by going like that. Scrolling down again. Actually, let's go back up here. Okay. Scrolling down again. Uh, this is your fuel economy. You have a current range, how far you can go. Um, also average since your last trip and then a current for, you know, current what's going on, like a bar going on as you're driving. If you scroll to the right, there's a second one. Uh, this one doesn't have the little current one moving around all the time so if you don't want that you know distracting you you can have that go away with the second one scrolling down again your trip you have two trips a and b you can reset them independently it shows your miles traveled your miles per gallon during that trip and the time during that trip uh, the stop start feature um, it's just letting you know the status of this uh, that's a feature that you can turn off if you want to using this button over here so we can disable it Scrolling down shows whatever your radio is doing. Nine stored messages and ten. Uh, this is where you can go into your screen setup and you can change the things on the corners here. So if you want your distance to empty to be there instead of your your compass or whatever, you can change there. Upper left, upper right, defaults, current gear, odometer, favorite menus, gear display, upper center. All these can be uh, customized. Scrolling down again will take us back to the digital speedometer. Okay, so here's the touchscreen. Very high clarity, uh, easy to use touchscreen. So you can see these icons across here at the bottom. Uh, this first one is your media. So right now it's just showing you your radio. It's on satellite radio, but you have AM, FM, satellite radio. You can also select other sources like Bluetooth, auxiliary, USBs. There's three of them uh, av available. Your next one is your climate. You have physical buttons down here, uh, but there's some, you know, basically more you know controls up here as well so it's redundant a little bit so you have your fan speed where you want the air to blow high and the temperatures for your driver and passenger recirculate the air front and rear defrosters all that you can control right here you can also sync the driver and passenger if you like also you can go into your controls a little shortcut there uh, it's actually your next icon but it's a shortcut to go to it from your climate control because they're related heated seat heated steering wheel and then your heated seat for your passenger and it's a three stage high medium and low the heated wheel is just on or off. You can look at the backup camera if you like. It has active guidelines. So without putting it in reverse, you can just push that button and you see what's going on back there. You can also hit, hit the zoom. It'll give you a top-down view. So if you're backing up to a trailer, that would help out. So that's a little shortcut to the controls. You also have your settings here. So you can go in lots and lots of different customization. Next one is your apps. So we already saw the controls member. We went to the shortcut. Uh, so the apps here, um, this is basically all the different things that you can have down here. So you can swap these out. This is where you'll find the off-road pages, backup camera, navigation. So let's go to the off-road pages. It takes a second to load this up. Pretty cool little little Jeep driving by. So this right here shows your more detailed information regarding your your chassis, uh, what you know what's locked, whether you have your your differentials locked or whatever. Also your sway bar, the condition of that, your your angle, uh, uh, the articulation and all that. You also have accessory gauge here. Uh, you can have a quick glance, keep an eye on your transmission temperature. That's very important. And your pitch and roll. You can see all this here. So let's say we want the off-road pages to go down here instead of this phone. So let's go ahead and push that, hold it, and drag it down here. So now we have the off-road pages down here instead of the phone. Uh, we don't have a cell phone connected anyway, so that would probably be a good idea to have that. A 
You also have a vehicle user guard that's, uh, user guide that's searchable here, right here on the screen. So you know how you typically buy a vehicle and they give you this manual and this like really tiny itsy bitsy print that's, that's hard to, uh, to read? Well this you can go in and you can search for particular things that you want to learn how to use. So that's really awesome. I like the fact that manufacturers are including a digital searchable user manual right here on the screen because why not, you know? All right, so the next one is navigation. Uh, so you can uh, put in a specific address. You can save addresses, all that stuff. You can also view the map. You can pinch zoom. You can move it around. It's pretty responsive. You can change the map view. Let's go back out of that. Now let's go to nav settings. So this is uh, kind of bugging me that it doesn't have. Let's go to map setup. Where is it at? Vehicle icon, there it is. See, it has a blue arrow, we don't wanna see that. Oh, it doesn't have, this vehicle doesn't have the little Jeep. I wanna see a little Jeep flying around in there. they will drive it around while I'm driving. Oh well, maybe that'll be in an update or something. The, the Wrangler has that. Other vehicles have the ability to change the icon. I'm not, I don't like that. I think I should, uh, I think they should update that. Okay, and then you go in your settings. So that's where we already saw that back here in this button. That's like a shortcut to there. Okay, so just get a, give you a quick run through of what's going on uh, with the with the radio here, uh, the, 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 the screen. Uh, you notice there's a clock, temperature set, outside temperature, all that stays where it is. So it's easy to use. There's a lot of features here, but you don't have to go in through all that if you don't want to. Uh, just like this screen over here, it's just you just keep up with what you want to use. You know, you know it's, it's, there's a lot of infinitely divisible complexities if you really get into it. Um, but it's it's simple to do the things that you want to do on a daily basis. So just remember that. I don't want to confuse people with showing everybody every little tiny detail uh, because it's um, it can be a little overwhelming, especially if you're not you know accustomed to it. You don't want to be playing around with this while you're driving. You want to you want to play around with it while you're in your driveway, and you can learn how to use the features that you want to use and then kind of forget the rest. So you have a traditional volume tuned through the stations. Now these are rubber knobs. Like I mentioned before, a lot of these knobs are rubbery, including this. This is a rubbery portion around here. Pretty neat. So you have some redundant buttons for your climate control, driver and passenger temperature, fan speed, automatic button, where you want the air to blow. There's your heated seat for the driver and passenger. Recirculate the air. It has a little Jeep shape, air conditioning, and uh, three-stage heated seat. See high, medium, and low. Parking sensors, you can turn those off if you want to. Want to. Default will be on. It'll be an indicator when it's off. So right now it says off. So this is the off light, okay? So it'll let you know here on the screen too. Um, and then you have your off-road cruise control. You can also turn your screen off if you don't want it turned on. You can always turn it off. Just tap the screen, it'll turn right back on. This is where you can turn the uh, stop-start feature off, like I mentioned. And the traction control uh, default will be on, but you can turn it off. And then again, it'll be a off light. 12 volt power supply. And you notice it has a little key right there letting you know that it turns on and off with the ignition. This is your media inputs. You have USB-C, regular USB and auxiliary inputs. Here is your window controls, your power windows. One touch down, they're quite fast, just like the Wrangler. You do have to hold it to go up. You have four auxiliary switches down here. So if you wanna add some lights or a winch or whatever, uh, you can do that. Uh, this is the locking differential, so you can uh, front and rear or rear only, so you can lock these front, lock those, uh, the rear only or front and rear. So it's a toggle switch to, one, to the one you want to lock. And then you have off-road plus, so when you push that, uh, this is only in four-wheel drive. So this is kind of like a rock or sand mode in which you can, uh, uh, you know, utilize, kind of telling the vehicle that you're in a different 
uh, situation than just regular dirt or whatever. And then you have the sway bar disconnect. You push that to disconnect it. Um, and it's electrically, it just basically disconnects each end um, in, in the middle so that way each end is independently moving up and down. Here's your four-wheel drive controls. You have two-wheel drive high, four-wheel drive high neutral, and four-wheel drive low. And it is really low when you put in four-wheel drive low, especially when you lock in the differentials. Okay, so here's your shifter. It has a little Jeep truck on the top. Not a regular Jeep. It has the Gladiator there. And then it's pretty self-explanatory. Reverse. When you put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up here. We already saw that. But you also have the parking sensors appear up here. And not only will it give you an audible tone when you get close to something, it'll also give you a, a visual, a little light there, letting you know uh, where the object is in relationship to your truck. There's neutral drive. Then you have a manual mode in which you can bump through, change to the gear ratios, the eight gear ratios manually, uh, and you know what gear you're in because it'll show right up here. At any time, you just move it to the right and it goes back to an automatic. Cup holders are here, even has a little place to put cell phone or whatever there in the center portion. Handbrake, parking brake, it's right here. Has a stitching, leather wrapped handle. There's a little cover back here, you pop that loose and there's a little strap to pull to release the transmission to put it in neutral if the vehicle is disabled. So that's a little interesting tid tidbit. Okay, so there's your armrest. Soft to the touch, very soft to the touch. And it's not quite big enough to share with the passenger so they can, you know, fend for themselves. And it lifts up in two places. So when we lift it up, it stays right where you put it, which is nice. So it's not rattling around. It is lockable. You see a little key location there. And there's a little storage space and it's rubberized here in the bottom place for wires to go in and out of that compartment. The second portion is this lower latch. So you can see there's two latches here. And there's a place for wires to go in and out of this compartment. And it's much deeper, like so. USB port in here. It'd be nice if the bottom portion was a lighter color so you can see in there a little bit better. But it is a nice wide open space and is rubberized on the bottom. Okay, so the rear view mirror, it's an auto dim rear view mirror. The light sensor is here on the back of it and it's not, my shade isn't covering, yeah, here we go, I'll cover it up. Okay, so now you can see it's auto dimming because I'm covering up the light sensor to give you an idea of what it looks like. Uh, you have some roadside assistance buttons up here and you're probably wondering where the dome lights are. They're right back here. So you have reading lights and then you have a center dome light there in the center portion with the speakers and that center bar. There's your visor. It has a mirror with lights on it. It's pretty cool, LEDs. Little clip. Home link garage door opener controls up here. Another clip. Slides out as well on a metal bar. Looking at the visibility, uh, you can see there's some pretty good amount of blind spots back there. The rear pillars and all that stuff. But, um, you know, it has the technology. It has, you know, side mirrors. The visibility on the side mirrors is pretty decent. I think it's okay. It's one, like pretty much any vehicle. You have to get used to the blind spots. Of course, as the camera system, the parking sensors... It also has the blind spot monitor system. So, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little triangle there on the corner of the of the side mirror. That's your blind spot detector, and it will illuminate that triangle uh, when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. It also illuminates when there's a vehicle in your rear cross traffic alert system. So, if you're backing out of a parking space, sort of like these cars here, uh, you can't see around the vehicle next to you. When you're back out, it will let you know if there's a car coming from either side. You also should be able to see it on the backup camera as well. So there you have it, Jeep Gladiator. Really excited to show this off. And before I let you go, I promised I was gonna show you the window sticker. So this is the window sticker here, 2020 
uh, Jeep Gladiator. So it starts off with the price, and basic features as far as you know what color, interior, exterior colors, the uh, the material of the interior, and then the transmission and all that stuff, engine. And then it goes into standard equipment, but almost immediately goes into on this particular one optional equipment because it's been upgraded so much. So you can see it has optional equipment, continues down all the way down here and continues to the next side. And you see all that stuff, you can see the prices um, for each additional package and then there's the total price. There's your fuel economy. Safety ratings hasn't been done yet. And then there's where it's made. There's another See so it says Toledo, Ohio. Remember that? Remember that little tidbit I talked about in the back with the heart? Little uh, Easter egg. That's a little clue there. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Van Underwood Chrysler Jeep Dobb Dram here in Whiteville, North Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.